This is an uh, interview with Dismantle singer and bassist Adam Warrior on Sunday, November 22nd, 2020 by Nick Perkel. Now, Adam, tell me about getting your first uh, bass guitar. Before I got my first bass, um, well, I started off with the guitar first. And then a uh, buddy of mine, Matthew, um, he, he like showed me how to play guitar, like, you know, the quick little basics. And him and his brother, Daniel, they, uh, well, Matthew plays drums and Daniel plays guitar. So they were like jamming out. And like, I wanted to jam with them, but I didn't really know the songs on, the songs that they were playing on guitar. So, and then they just, and there was a bass right there. So I think Daniel asked me like, hey, why don't you just like play on the bass? And then I just told him like, well, I, I mean, I don't, I don't really know like how to play it or anything. He just showed me it real quick. He's like, no, nah, you know, there's nothing to it. You pretty much just play like the root note of uh, of everything uh, of the song. And then you got it. Like, All right, I'll try it out. So I did it. And then that, that's how I started playing bass. And I didn't get my first bass <laughs> like years later when, because um, uh, I, was, I was just like borrowing a bass from like that whole time. And uh, the first bass that I got was in, that was actually mine, was uh, an Ibanez Iceman, which is, it was, it was pretty cool. It was, it was a nice bass. Now, did you seek any lessons or get any private tutors over the years? On, I did take like a basics class of guitar and uh, just to see if like I missed anything, because like, well, well, my buddy Matthew showed me, and uh, just in case, yeah, like I said, just in case I missed anything, I mean, we'll come to the class, like I pretty much like, knew everything. But what what they did teach me that, what they did teach me was like how to read music, and it, that was, it was really good. And as for bass, I did take a, I did take the same thing, like, you know, a basics class, again, just, to, just if I missed anything. And I think there was like five or six, sessions and the teacher only showed up to like two and he was late on both of them and he just like never showed up again and so i did i just like got my money back but that was it like i said if it was if it was it was just to if i missed anything but i mean i pretty much knew it so i was i was just like all right i'm good to go and like you know kind of did things the right way can you tell me about how Dismantle formed and give me a rundown to where you guys are now? Yeah, how we formed Dismantle back in 2006. It was with me and Frank. Um, we're, we're in a band together. You know, it was a high school band. Uh, was with, with my two friends also, with Matthew and Daniel. And we had a singer. His name was Ardo. And... Um, well, me and Frank, we, we, we kind of have like the same, the same mindset of like, we wanted to do, and, you know, we started, we started to do like, uh, we started to do some originals in that, in that band. I mean, we're mainly just like playing covers, like freaking Iron Maiden covers, some Judas Priest covers. But, and then, like I said, me and Frank, we had the same mindset of it. And so me and him, we just like went off on our own and just formed this panel. And up until right now, um, well, I mean, I think now it's like better than ever. Uh, got everything good, rolling again, with everything that's going on and uh, and personal stuff. You know, shit always happens. Life always happens. And but the good thing now is that we got it going. We got it going good. And you know, just like working on new things. Improving on the band as well, improving like like our production, improving our 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 songwriting as well. Now, can you help me in on uh, your current lineup? The current lineup right now is Albert on guitar, and we just recently got a new drummer, Edwin. He's been with us like uh, I'd say like like about a year or so. And, um, yeah, he was, he, he's bringing a lot of, like, enthusiasm into the band, a lot of positivity. And 
because he he plays for another band called Vital. I think Albert was uh he he was running out of room at his house, and after he moved out, they like came in, they I think they just like bumped into each other, and he was mentioning to Albert that like oh he's like getting Vital up, and he mentioned to him that like we kind of need a drummer, and so he he put it out there that that he'll do drums and. You know, kind of the rest is history, and he's been with us since, and you know, it's been bringing the band up a lot. And it's, it's like it feels like a band again. <laughs> now, I really dug checking out your Instagram podcast back in September. You expect to do another one, or like host like a webcast concert soon? Yeah, that was like a spur of the moment when we did that, because like with everything that's going on with all this COVID stuff, um, you know, there's can't really go out and play shows or even, you know, have a night out, go get some beers or, you know, or stuff like that. So I've been seeing like a, a lot of people have been doing that. A lot of people have been, have been moving to social media and, you know, let, let's take a jab at it. And that was what we did. And it was, it was really fun. It was really cool. Um, you know, interacting with, with the viewers, whoever, whoever was on, Know, chatting with them we're like in between songs you know go back there go go back to the phone and you know like interact with them and you know we don't really do that we don't really do much of that and like we we are thinking about like doing something like that again maybe a little bit more like intimate maybe more more personal more more one-on-one which is really good you know like we don't we've always like kept quiet and just like let our music speak for itself but now you know we we got some things to say we we got a voice too and why not socialize a little bit more tell me about recording crisis and within the mind for the new album yeah how we recorded that we recorded that here we recorded on our own i bought like um like like a little recording program program bundle and you know it came, it came the program, the interface, you know the some mics and like earphones and everything. So I mean, I, I got that like a few years ago, and I've just you know just been like messing around with it on my own. Just you know, whenever I get some ideas, you know, record it down instead of like just keeping it in my head and I'll forget about it the next day. Um, and you know, it, it really helps out a lot. Because whenever we got some ideas or something, we just like jot it down instead of like trying to explain it to each other. Like, you know, why don't you just hear this? <laughs> and uh, that's how we did it. We really took our time with it. Like I said, I'm an amateur when it comes to, to all that stuff. But I mean, I, I really like focused in on it, really, really learned the program more to, to try to do some of it right. And you know, I think it came out pretty good for for what it is. You know, we've we've always done like our demos and like all those kinds of stuff on our own. We haven't released anything since I think it was 2012, 2013. There was our last EP, and you know, with with this, it's like you know, it's new music, trying to show that you know we have new music and we're gonna be we're gonna be releasing new music and. You know, we we've been around for like a long time, and now time to show that you know that we we're still here. We're still here. We're we're still one of those bands that uh, that are still around. Like I said, since like 2006, we still we got the we got the real the wheels rolling on this band. So there's more to come. Now, what kind of recording techniques did you use for this upcoming album? Well, all the music that we've had the the first song, Crisis. All those, most of those riffs, most of that music is just like old riffs that we've had for years already. Since me and Albert like started getting the band back together and started getting going, started writing some new music, but you know, we just never got around to it. Just, you know, life happens, like I said, and we couldn't, we just never got to it. And now finally, like, it feels like the time is right. Like I said, like all of it is like, there's old music, but there's not, to me, I don't think there's much technicality to it. It's pretty much like, 
we write like what well, well, we want to hear. And if we like it, well, hopefully everybody else likes it too. <laughs> How do you get a Zetro to promote a, that show you were at uh, back in 2019? Yeah, about that show, we couldn't, we didn't play it. We had to drop it. We had to cancel for, you know, there a lot of things were like happening, happening at that time. A lot of like personal stuff and uh, we, we just couldn't. We just couldn't make it. You know, that I feel, I feel really bad that of canceling because it, it was a good show. But um, Ken from from Mentalized Productions, like he he got him to to promote that show, and that was, that was his show. And more props to him to to putting all that together. What's the live music scene like right now for metal bands in LA? I mean, it's like kind of hard to play. There's not much. There's not many places for bands to, to play. It, everything has to be like all outdoors, which kind of sucks. I mean, you know, it's we all play metal. It's supposed to be in the bars. It's supposed to be like like in a sweaty, hot environment. You know, that that's how that's how I get everybody get everybody rallying like that there, there's shows here and there but it's like i said it's kind of hard to to get to find a place to host one the only one that comes to mind right now is ken like he's he's been trying to do some he's been throwing some shows and at some place or you know it has to be outdoors i mean because that's just how it is right now What's the rarest dismantle-related right. thing you have in your personal collection? Yeah, the the rarest thing that I have is uh, the Satanic Four shirt. There's only, a, I don't know, maybe like 20 were printed. And you know, I had to keep one. But, I mean, I don't even wear it. It's just like in my drawer. It's like so fresh. But, I mean... I don't know when those. I don't know when will when will repeat those. When will reprint them? Uh, and the other thing, aside from the shirts, there there's another thing that I have that's pretty rare. It's some Satanic Force tapes. There were about maybe ten were made, and I kept like two or three. I think. I mean, I I think they're all cracked. I probably stepped on it or like dropped it when I was like moving stuff around. Yo, were those made by Area Death Productions? Yeah, yeah. Area Death printed all that stuff. Awesome. Yeah, they yeah, they printed Area Death printed um the the Satanic Force and the End to the Forbidden. So they, they made they made a bunch of CDs and a little and some Satanic Force shirts, a bunch of patches and some pins too. I I think I can't even find those pins anymore. I don't think I kept any. What is your most cherished instrument? The most cherished one would have to be my acoustic. I have this uh, this Ibanez acoustic. I don't even know how long I've had it for. Um, you know that that's that has to be like my favorite one. You know, at the end of the day, I just come back home, go in my room, and just you know, my acoustic is always there. Just like jam on it, play some chords, and you know, just like mellow out, take a few beers. Now, what's your favorite urban legend or ghost story from living in LA? There's there's two that come to mind. There's one where um, in downtown LA, uh, where where my wife, where she worked at for a while, right there in Alvaro Street, La Placita. It's right right across the street from uh, from Union Station. In that area, there's a there's a place called the Pico House, and I think the history is that like there was like a war or something going on, and a bunch of people got slaughtered. There they well right there they always have some events, and they're having the Dia de los Muertos, and well I mean she she knew some of the securities there, so they they let us go like in some restricted areas right there in the Pico house. And it was like, it's like in the middle of the building, it's like a little meadow. 
it was, well, it was at night. It was like pretty creepy. But I mean, I didn't hear or like feel anything. But well, my wife said that one time she was there, like she just passed through or something that she got like pushed or like heard voices or something like that. Man, that's pretty creepy. I was like, I want to go there. <laughs> I want to, I want to hear that. <laughs> And the other one that comes to mind, which is pretty crazy, um, I was driving. It's it's over there in Pasadena. There is uh, it's, it's called Suicide Bridge, and well, I mean, a lot of people have jumped off there, and it's funny. Like, I mean, I uh, I passed by there like at night, not even knowing where I was, and you could see like they built like tall fences on the the rails because. I mean, if you want to kill yourself, I guess you're going to have to work for it now. <laughs> Final words. All right. Well, a lot of things going on right now. We all just have to be, be positive, stay optimistic. And, and um, you know, we'll, we'll all get through this. It's a very tough time, but we'll, we'll all just keep our heads up. And, you know, we're... we're we're releasing some new music, and like I said before, we're about more than halfway done writing this new album. And once we're done, we're going to hit the studio right away and, you know, get to it and, you know, release some new music, release a new album that, that we've been dying to do, and hopefully you all like it. Just stay tuned. Keep in touch. This has been an interview on Sunday, November 22nd, 2020, with Dismantle singer and bassist Adam Warrior by Nick Perkel.